Hello viewers, thanks for joining us. The program is Discuss. I'm Chinelo Bob Osamo. Our guest today is Chief Edwin Kiawado Clark, OFR. He was Commissioner for Education in the Midwest State. He was equally Commissioner for Finance and Establishment in the same state. He was a Federal Minister under Gowon's administration. In the Second Republic, he was the Senator of the Federal Republic. He is currently the leader of the South-South Delegates to the CONFAB. We'll be discussing resource control and much more. Don't go away, we'll be back after this. Chief, thank you very much for joining yeah. us. Yeah, thank you. You. What, what, you are the leader of the South-South Delegates to the CONFAB. Yes, please. Why, why did you walk out? Well, we walked out because justice was not being played. There was a lot of injustice. We have been members of the conference. We participated in the first plenary, participated in all the committees. When the committee was set up to see whether they can work out a consensus in 11 problematic areas, committee reports, including resource control, which was number one, rotational presidency, tenure, and so forth, local government, and so forth. The committee was made up of all the state leaders and the zonal leaders. So the, in order to find a consensus to this, so that the meeting could arrive at a unanimous decision. When that committee met, they were unable to reach consensus in certain uh, subjects. Committee uh, matters like resource control, tenure, pres uh, presidency, and so forth. But when we came the following day, this matter to be, was to be discussed. We raised an objection that there was no consensus on resource control. Are we talking about Joiruku's committee? Yeah, Joiruku's committee. Okay. But the the chairman said, "Go go ahead." At a certain stage, I raised issue of observation. And the chairman asked that the microphone should be taken from me. And the microphone was taken from me. He was rushing to close the, uh, the session. He believed that everybody agreed to, what, uh, to whatever decision the rookie committee arrived at. So it was at that juncture, when we were protesting, that he said they should move a motion, which was already prepared. And one chief, Martin Elegi, from a point state, was to read it. It was already prepared. And they know who to support it. Ibrahim, former attorney general from uh, North Central, was to support it. Then we also moved a motion to reject that there was no consensus. It was at that junction they were very enthusiastic in counting the majority. So at that stage, we worked out. So we worked out because there was no proper procedure done. They, we were not allowed to speak on those areas where there was no consensus. Some of the delegates are and, alleged, yes. alleged that at Joiruku's committee, some were raising 14%, uh, 18%, and 17% was agreed on. And there was no objection from the delegates from South South. But that you haven't slept over it, you came back the next morning. And you objected. There was no, that was not true. Right from the beginning, our delegates refused to accept anything that was less than 25. They objected to it. And because the committee was a large committee, they drowned them down. Otherwise, the, the workout could have started from that place. Did you, why, why when, did they, they, when therefore they reported to us what happened, we said no. We should go. Even when Mr. Gaminono Nosode, who they, whom they suspected to mention 18%, stood up to explain, the chairman ruled him out, never allowed him to speak on the floor of the conference. So there was a lot of injustice done. Our people never agreed to the 17%. Did you vote before working out? There, there was no voting about 17%. There was no voting. No voting. I will, because our people, they never allowed us, our people to speak. 
But let me make a point. It would be wrong of anybody to say that people who were delegated to meet and to report to their people to take a final decision on such matters. If there was, if a, a people said there was no consensus on certain issues, and the delegates did that from those, those areas, wanted to explain, and the chairman refused, uh, 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 refused to allow them to speak, that was injustice. Now, uh, on Padek was set up, later NDDC. What role, have, have these people really played their role in these areas? Because uh, some argue that the money given to these people are also diverted by the same people from South South, misappropriated. And that is why the, co the, the condition of the people in those uh, areas remain unchanged. The problem of Umpadek and NDDC mm -hmm. is the same problem of the majority people oppressing the minority people. Even though they are the, these various commissions were, made, were established for our own benefit, who were the people benefiting from them? The same people from the other major ethnic groups. All the major contracts were awarded to them. They never went there. For example, the son of one of the presidents of this country in those days was awarded a contract. He did not visit the site, but he was paid off from because of his father. Which of them? The president. Abasha. The late General Bacha, son, whether is Ibrahim, uh, got a contract for a foreshore war in one of the riverine areas. He was paid 500 million naira. He did not visit the site and he collected the money. Nothing the, was done. Nothing was done. I can go on. The, even the, uh, the secretary to the federal government at that time, they all got contracts. Some of the governors in the north today, they became rich from Umpadek. They were forcing our people to give them contracts. All the major contracts. We were impoverished. Nobody empowered us. So when, they, uh, and they, it was not properly funded. So when the DC was founded again, I reported to Mr. President on the 8th of December, I'm sorry, on the 31st of December, 2003, no, 2002, that the presidency has started again to take all the major contracts from our people. Our people were being made impoverished at a, at a, at a meeting we held with him. He sent for the chairman of, ND, of NDDC, Ogochuku, Chief Ogochuku, sent for the managing director. They came to explain. So we agreed, okay. No more of such contracts should be awarded again to people, mainly to people outside the, the zone, because they do not understand the problems of the area. If they were awarded to experts from outside, one can understand. One could understand. But, but future contracts should be awarded to our people. What is happening today? The major contracts again have been awarded to people, particularly from the north, the west, and the, uh, uh, some, of, uh, some part of it to the west, to the east. So we are left with nothing. We are being treated like colonized people. We are part of this country. No one is senior to us. So that is the problem. So those, now um, uh, NDDC is being underfunded. They cannot perform their duties. They threaten them with sack and all sorts of things. If they don't award them contracts, Members of the National Assembly, the Presidency, and, and prominent members from other parts, they, they are the people running this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, commission. For example, apart from the managing director, the chairman and other provided for in the, in, the, uh, in the law establishing the commission, majority of the members are from the North. The directors of NDDC are from the north. We are not there. No prominent member of the uh, South South Zone is a member of NDDC. I can mention one to you. Chief Nadama, Alaji Nadama from Sokoto, is a member. There are others. 
Even the 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 the, the uh, supervising council, which the governors are members, the two members outside the governors of the south south are all from the north. So what are we talking about? We are being treated like people who have been colonized in their own country. You take our oil away. You do everything. So the issue of our people are corrupt. It's not different. After all, the same later Bacha took our away our own money, $1.2 billion. Where does it come from? From the north? But the Londoners regard it as God sent. God, God, God's gift. Uh, Professor Yadudu was a member of, uh, of uh, Abacha's government. He was the legal advisor. They did not know that Abacha was corrupt. Was taking our money. Why, why this, uh, uh, this um, question of saying that this, uh, the South South people are corrupt, they use the money, they don't use the money. Let me say this. If the South South people are receiving, the governors are receiving 8 billion or 7 billion. Nobody outside the South that has the right to ask them to account for what they spend the money for. Similarly, the man who is receiving 1 billion in Yobe or wherever he is, we have not asked him to account for what, what he does with the money collected from our own area. They pay nothing, so, they contribute nothing to the national coffer. Not West, 0%. Not East, 0%. Not Central, 0%. Um, Southeast, 2.5%. Southwest, 3.6%. Uh, South, South, 91%. You don't contribute anything, and you are asking me that you want to give me 17%. This is our anger. The arrogance of the Northerners must be called off. And the time has come. To, to, uh, for it to be called off. Yes, um, the papers contain so many stupid and irresponsible statements made, allegedly made by uh, Alaju Marodiko, a good friend of mine. I understand he said that we are afraid of our youths, we cannot uh, control our youths, that he will go to the, uh, to the South South to see things for himself before he will come back to see what is going on. He talked about corruption of our governors, or people in our, in, our, in our own places. Let's want somebody ask a question. Why did Buhari want to create uh, Alaji Marodiko from London? Put him in a crate, in a wooden crate. But for the, for the vigilance of the people in Britain, he could have been carried like luggage to Nigeria and to be tried by, 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 uh, uh, by uh, uh, Buhari. He should ask himself, explain to Nigerians, why did Buhari want to greet him to Nigeria? When he talks about other people. For a man who, has been, who was to be created to Nigeria by a fellow a northerner, and who has been out of touch for such a long time to acclaim that he is the leader of northern, uh, the northern people, that is why whatever Arrangement would have agreed with them. Omar Diku was responsible for the failure. We had had a very good relationship with Arewa Consultative Forum, leaders of the North. They were there. But Omar Diku came to say that he was the leader. And because they were fighting for the common cause, wanting to take our money, they said they couldn't pay their, ta their, 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 their staff if they granted us such a man, uh, such percentage. So they were selfish. Instead of them to thank us, to say we are grateful, please, allow us to uh, let this figure be there. After some time, we can readjust. So Omaru Diko to make such silly statements about us. When I was federal minister or commissioner, Omar Diko was a state commissioner for, mini, for information. Why, does this, why, why should he arrogate so much to himself? If the type of Omar Diko is the only person available in the north to lead them, then they have no leader. Then they should stay on their own. So that's what I feel, that Omar Diko is overstepping his bounds.
our youths are not employed with all their qualifications. Our youths are not empowered. Why would they not be angry? Are we the people to instigate them? We have been the mellowing down uh, factor. We have been telling our youth, don't take, don't take the law into your own hand. Things will be settled democratically. And that's the message we've sent to them. Let me warn. People should remember that this country belongs to all of us. The Northerners should not arrogate to themselves that Nigeria belongs to them alone. And if they are not there, no other person should be there. If they were the people who had this oil, they could have threatened to break up from Nigeria and establish their own republic. So I want guess to the extent of being angry with these people with such statements. But we all belong to Nigeria and we must accommodate one another. And that's our attitude. The argument is that you did not contribute anything in making the oil. Uh, in, in putting the oil there, like you say, it's a God gift, yes. and you contribute nothing in bringing it out. Yes. And so, why, why do you have to take that again? Is a stupid uh, statement made by anybody. The land belongs to us. The ownership of land matters a great deal. It's almost half per, half the contribution in any industry. When you want to have an industry with anybody. Produce land, I produce the technical know-how. That is like the oil industry. When the federal government, the federal government did not pay a couple since the time Olebris, the oil was found in Olebris in 1956, the oil companies came with their own money. And they were, in fact, the people paying tax and rents, to the royalties, to the federal government. And it was that money that was being shared as mentioned in the as uh, entrenched in the constitution of 1960 and the uh, constitution of 1963. So if anybody says that we did not, what did they themselves contribute? No cocoa money was used in developing the oil industry. No granite pyramid money was used in developing the oil industry. The oil industry belonged to us. Others are merely oppressing us because of their so-called population. Until 1940, there was no Nigeria. There was no Nigeria in 19, in, uh, until 1914. We, le we lived in separate areas. We had our own customs. But if we have agreed to come together, the basis of that agreement was based on economic and political arrangements. That's why it was agreed that 50% of, en of uh, any mineral oil should go to the region where it was produced. At that time, when the 1960 oil law was made, were those regions to contribute to the mineral resources? This was a provision in our constitution. Until Gawan said, I'm fighting the civil war. I will take all the money. So it was Gawan who abrogated the, the, the constitutional provision. Then after the war, he said, I want to fight, I want to rehabilitate, I want to rebuild, I want to, uh, to repair. So he needed the money until Governor Lee took Segari to court. Then his little percentage was granted. Then later, one and a half percent. Later, under Babagida, it was three percent. Under Abacha, it became 13 percent. Minimum of 13 percent. Increasing it to the uh, 50 percent, which was provided for in 1960 and 1963. So for anybody to say that we did not contribute any money, I want to, anybody to correct me or to challenge me that they, they use cocoa money to develop the oil industry, that they use granite oil. It was the use of the granite pyramid oil dignating against the middle belt where there were no granite that led J.S. Uh, Taka of uh, blessed memory to kick against that he wanted his own area. So this in the West, we had the same thing. When television came in 1956, it was not extended to the Midwest. Roads were not extended to the Midwest. Even an attempt was made to plant uh, uh, a, a special spe uh, species of, uh, of rubber. 
in in the uh, in places like uh, uh, Kenya and Odogolu. So we have been suffering. Now that God has decided that you people have this, we have been denied of it. We won't allow it. We won't accept it. That's our package for the week. Keep a date with us same time next week. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.